Hello, everyone. My name is Kyle Peacock, and I'm on the SDK team at the Definity Foundation. Welcome to the Social Fi session. Here we're going to experience the creativity of our hackathon participants for the Social Fi category, which includes submissions for decentralized social media projects that incorporate tokenization. Here you will glimpse the future of next generation community owned social platforms. I will be your moderator and I'm happy to pronounce or happy to share with you our judges. We will have Vincent Wen from Masari, Guy Wule from Andreessen Horowitz, Linda Xie from Scalar Capital, Maria Shen from Electric Capital, and Su Xu from Amino Capital. Now it's time to get to know our seven finalists for the Social Fi category. They're going to be pitching their ideas today in order of presentation. We have Conchex, Crowd Eats, Mora, AKA T D Star, Go Bazinga, Contribute with Team Bonsai, STKRS, I believe Strikers, uh, and Signals. But first, let's not forget about the rules. Each presenter has six minutes for the demo and presentation. After the demo, each presenter will have three minutes for a Q&A session with the judges. Be mindful of time. Once the time is up, we'll move to the next presentation. Judges will need to fill out the scoring board before the end of the last pitch. For your information, this session is already being recorded, but only the speakers, judges, and panelists will be available. All right, with all of that, let's kick things off with our first team. Uh, let's get started with Conchex. Hi, and welcome to our Supernova demo. My name is Moritz, and I have the honor to present Conchex, a podcast hosting and management platform that aims to herald a new generation of podcasting enabled by Web3. Let's start off by meeting Paul the podcaster, who runs his own decently successful podcast, but has a hard time justifying all the money and work he puts into his projects because he hardly sees any results on a monetary or community base. And through research and by speaking with many podcasters directly, we validated that this is not only a problem of Paul, but podcasters in general struggle to monetize their work and interact with their listeners to create strong communities. Now we want to help solve these problems using two main technical building blocks. On one side, revenue streams via the podcasting 2.0 standard using the Lightning Network, and on the other side, tokenization potentials based on the internet computer. And now our mission as contracts is to bring these building blocks together to create a Web3 platform that improves podcast monetization by offering Lightning and token-based monetization opportunities and improving community interaction by making the community ac accessible, excuse me, through the tokenization. And now to see how that works, we will jump straight into our live demo. For that, we will need three characters, Paul the podcaster, who now hosts his podcast using contracts, Susan the supporter, who buys a share of Paul's episode, and Lennon the listener that sends a tip that will be distributed according to the token shares. So let's get out of this presentation and jump right into Paul's view. Um, Paul doesn't have the time to show us his whole contracts experience, but he will give us a quick rundown of the main contracts features. He can create a podcast here, but of course, Paul has already done that. He has even created two podcasts. And very importantly here, you can see that each podcast has its own RSS canister. That will be very important in a later stage of this demo. Now, if we look into the episodes, for each episode Paul uploads, a new token or episode canister will be deployed on the blockchain that on one hand contains the audio file and the picture, so the assets, but it also manages exactly 100 fungible tokens. And the use case or utility of these tokens is that each token represents exactly 1% of the generated revenue from the episode. And now if Paul wants to do that, he can sell some of these shares to his community to let them participate and get some funding. And in our example here, for this episode, Paul has already done that. So now let's jump over with a switch of a browser to Susan, the supporters view, and she now wants to support Paul and buy the shares. So because she is very determined, she unfortunately skips our 
beautiful marketplace and goes directly to the explore page. And now in a couple of seconds, when this is loaded, she or she will see that there are some offer for Paul's episode. And by clicking on this card, we get into the episode or token detail view. And this will be the same that you just saw for Paul. But of course, this time we actually want to purchase the tokens. And while this happens in the background, because this takes a couple of seconds, I will use the time to talk a little bit about what happens technically here. So as I said, we have two main canister types. We have RSS canisters for each podcast and token or episode canisters, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> excuse me, for each episode. And the main purpose of the RSS canisters is to expose these feeds that you can see here. Um, RSS feeds for podcasts make sure that on every listening application that you want to use, you can actually also access the podcast because you have standardized tags here. And in the beginning, we have a couple of general information about the podcast, like the title. And at the bottom, we have things like items. These are the episodes. And the whole monetization magic of Podcasting 2.0 works with these value tags. As we can see, we have recipients with an address and a split. And these information or this information is used to send lightning payments and reward podcasts in the community. And now with our solution or our concept, these items here are controlled and governed by the respective token or episode canister. So that means, I think the transaction now went through, as you can see, um, we are in Susan's view and she now owns 20 of the own shares. If we check now the episode um, before selling the token, um, Paul had 99 of the shares and we had one fee share. And now if we refresh, we can see that we have an additional split of 20 of the shares that belong to Susan. And that brings us to our third character. This is Lennon, the listener who uses the Breeze app. This is a um, podcast player that supports the podcast 2.0 standard and value lightning value payments. And this is the wrong podcast. Let's go into the correct one. Let's just make sure that we refresh here. And now I can play the episode. Um, I don't know if you can hear that in Zoom, but it's also not too important. And we have a couple of lightning-based payment mechanism here. And we want to use Boostergram for this demo today. Um, Boostergram is something like a lightning-based tip. So I can send 1,000 Satoshis here uh, with a message and just send it out by the clip because I like the episode so much that I want to reward the creator and, and his community. And now, Based on our concept, what we of course expect to see here is we now send 1000 Satoshis and of course these should be distributed according to the splits. And we can do that by on one side checking Susan's transactions and we can see if we refresh that, um, that this is there. And also we can do that for um, Paul. I think for time reasons, we will keep with the transactions here. And um, also you can see that that worked and now let's slide back into the presentation as I'm running out of time. We made use of a lot of the unique and value of the internet computer, but most importantly, we created a solution that works right now. And in our next steps, we will onboard creators and podcasters to refine our functionality. And in the future, we can easily extend our concepts beyond podcasting to like music and videos. And yeah, with that, I want to thank you for your attention. Um, yes, I think my time is up now. Thank you to everyone from the Divinity Dev community and the foundation um, that supported us until here. And it was a blast to present this. Thank you. Thank Let's you so much. Let's go ahead and move right along to CrowdEats. CrowdEats, you can go ahead and unmute now. Hey, my name is Justin, and I'm very excited to present CrowdEats, a Web3 reimagining of how we interact with local businesses on the internet. We live in a review-centric world. Most of us check ratings and reviews before buying things. But can we actually trust these reviews? The answer is increasingly no. We're seeing a record proliferation of fake reviews. Here's an example of a fake review I myself wrote last year. Think about how many reviews like this are on the internet. Something is clearly not working. This is partially because Web2 review platforms are reluctant to increase the effort required to write a review because most people don't actually write them. And they don't because there is little benefit to doing so. This leads to problem number one, that people are not incentivized enough to write reviews. Our solution is simple, pay people to write reviews. Once that incentive is in place, we can then safely increase the requirements for writing reviews. Here, I'm opening the CrowdEats app on my Pixel Android. I decided from the very beginning that if I wanted to go consumer, I had to go mobile. Now I'm going to write a review. It's a familiar UX. You pick a rating and write some text. Then you pick the restaurant or what's called the shop that your review is for. 
this search functionality is implemented using a full text search index I built using Matoku and runs completely on the internet computer. Once you pick your shop, you're then required to upload at least one photo. This is not only to give users visual content, but also to help ensure the credibility of the reviewer. The reviewer also has to verify their location to make sure they're within a certain distance of the shop. We can also see the token reward. For example, I received 45 crowd if this review is published, including a bonus for being one of the first to review the shop. Crowd is the native token of CrowdEats. What happens now? In a typical Web2 platform, the review would then go through some opaque machine learning algorithm, which may flag it for in-house moderators to review. But the reality is worse. Over the cases, over the years, we've seen cases and cases of review platforms cajoling and bullying restaurants, telling them that their bad reviews can be filtered out if they buy ads. These platforms often hire an army of salespeople who call up restaurants and offer them such deals. This leads to problem number two, that centralized review platforms abuse their power to moderate reviews. Here's our solution. Take the power of moderation away from the platform and give it to decentralized community juries. This is how it works. Every review goes through a jury who vote whether or not to publish the review. Users stake tokens to become jurors and don't know one another. If a juror votes in the majority, they get their stake back plus a reward. Otherwise, they lose their stake. Voting in the majority in a divided case yields larger rewards. This disincentivizes laziness. If a user wants to participate in a jury, they should first navigate to the adjudicate tab. Then they should join the queue. Now they're matched with the case. You can see all the relevant details like the stake required, the maximum reward, and the time given to vote. If the, choose, if the user chooses to accept the case, they will be acquired as stake tokens. Once they've accepted the case, they can then see the actual review that they need to adjudicate. It's important to carefully review the review, including any attached photos, as well as the profile of the reviewer, which shows you their history of published reviews. You can also search up whether a review was plagiarized or not using this tool. How does a juror decide whether to approve or reject a case? They should consult the review guidelines, which will one day be decided by community DAO. Now let's vote. In this case, I'm gonna to vote to reject. Since I'm the first to vote in this case, I won't know whether I keep my stake or whether I get any token reward. You can see the past cases you voted in, which shows the statuses of those cases as well as how you voted in them. You can also see your current token balance, including the history of your transactions. Let's take a step back. The purpose of reviews is to decide whether to eat at a restaurant, but how do we find restaurants in the first place? On apps like Yelp, you search for keywords and then page through a long list of results, but that assumes you know what to search for. On apps like Instagram, you see photos of what your friends are eating, but you don't see the restaurant's rating, and sometimes you don't even see the restaurant's name. What if you could combine those two experiences into one? What if you could build a viral social five food experience and link it to a trusted layer of community moderated reviews? When you first open the app, you're greeted with a home feed of posts, which are snapshots of something someone has eaten. Like in Web2, you can tag posts, write captions, and like them. Everything is stored on the internet computer, including these photos. Every post is also associated with the shop, where you can instantly see its information, including its address, photos, and most importantly, its reviews. We will soon enable decentralized moderation for posts, where posts that get reported also get sent to a jury. The home feed is for people you follow. You can see your followers and followees from your profile. You can also see trending posts nearby if you want to know what's popular in the area. If you have something specific you want to search for, you can revert back to a more traditional UX. Again, oops, sorry. Again, everything is running on the internet computer. There's no AWS, GCP, or any centralized cloud involved here at all. Due to time constraints, I was only able to show a fraction of the features available. For example, I've entirely skipped the login experience, which leverages Web2 social sign-in to maximize consumer adoption. There are a ton of exciting features we're working on, all of which are unique to Web3. I'd be happy to dive deeper into some of these during the Q&A. But my top priority this year is to get, the, get this on the Android and iOS app stores and into the hands of real users as soon as possible. I believe tokenization is a powerful tool for aligning incentives in a virtual space. Online reviews is a perfect use case because right now the incentives between platform users and restaurants are grossly misaligned. But more broadly, anyone who's been around young people knows how much they like taking pictures of food and sharing their opinions on food. At the same time, young people are internet savvy and naturally suspicious of all the ads, promotions, and false marketing that sadly has become the norm. If CrowdEats can position itself as a viral useful and the most trustworthy application in this space, I believe we can seize a massive market opportunity. 
And with that, I'm happy to take any questions. All right. Thank you, Justin. Uh, thank you, Crowd Eats. Let's go ahead and move on to our next contestant, Mora from DSTAR. Hi, everyone. My name is Lou. Thanks for having me here to represent DSTAR team. Our project is Mora. Mora is to deliver the autonomy of thought and create your private um, uh, space. Oops. So first let's get to know more about Mora protocol. Mora protocol is content protocol built on top of internet computer. By leveraging IC characteristics, we use canister as a base unit. Content relations, finance, um, contracts are all implemented in canisters, not the platform. So it's 100% platform decouple. A person can have any number of content canisters with different dimensions. All these canisters will comply with model protocol. There's one um, thing that we've been thinking, which is why people do not realize the need for a content protocol. First of all, everyone is numb to the inefficiency of traditional content publishing process. Secondly, the traditional internet does not have shared database. Um, they compete, not collaborate. It's a zero sum game. Blockchain technology before internet computers have problems like storage limitation, computation um, limitation, et cetera. So they are not uh, really good enough to build a large scale probability, um, prob productivity tools. Whereas the with internet computers, um, they can all be solved. So with uh, Mora APIs and the tools we provide, uh, builders can easily set up decentralized platforms in the forms of subscription accounts, blocks, wiki medias, etc. One problem we are trying to solve is the efficient distribution of traditional content. In order to publish articles, content creators have to register accounts on different platforms, the new rules, new functionalities, whereas with Mora, you only need one manage management portal to manage the content and publish to all the applications that build on top of Mora protocol. It breaks the data monopoly and improve the circulation of content as well as the overall content publishing efficiency. Because of Mora protocol, content circulation is no longer in a closed loop. All content related data, relationship, and finance can be circulated throughout the network. Every participant contributes to the whole ecosystem to achieve the maximum accumulability. It turns a zero sum game to a collaborative one. Another problem we're trying to solve is data ownership. Since the ownership of canisters belongs to the user, that soft data misuse that's happening in the modern world. In Mora protocol, income generated from um, content creators are sent back into canister directly. No one can take away the data, your followers, your incomes. Mora protocol support pluggable contract design. It empower builders to customize the capability for the content and canister. By calling the trusted canisters, user can switch on and off features like voting, fundraising, article on FT, and a conditional inheritance. To facilitate the development of Mora ecosystem, we will build infrastructure around content, include Mora blockchain explorer, copyrights certificate, etc. Um, so let me show a uh, present some uh, application that we have been built uh, so far. So I'll jump out to the presentation. And this is our uh, website. This is the content uh, consumer portal where users can manage the subscriptions, the NFT um, collections, the, the records, the comments. It's 100% um, decentralized and fully functional. Moreover, uh, Mora allow anyone to build such 
consumer portals as they want by using uh, Mora SDK. This is the content producer portal. It's used to manage the production and distribution of user uh, network-wide content. User can have any numbers of content canisters at the same time to serve different presentation purpose. Um, and uh, this is the canister for content display. It can be in any forms supported by Mora protocol, such as Medium, Blocks, Wiki. All contents are, uh, are coming from canisters, not the platform. Mora platform only responsible for displaying the content and uh, calling the canister functions. Uh, this is the Mora blockchain explorer or Mora scan. Um, from here, you can generate content copyright certificate, uh, which is part of the infrastructures that uh, we're building. And I think that's the end of it. Thank you very much. Thank you, Xiaoyi, Thank and you. the rest of the DSTAR team. Uh, let's go ahead and go on to Gobazinga. Well, hello, everyone. We are Team Gobazinga, and we have built a decentralized proof of stake content moderation module for as a part of our Supernova hackathon. Now, I'm sure all of many of us would have encountered such content on social media. Unfortunately, we are not the only ones. More than 3 billion people across the world are exposed to such content and risk getting affected by PTSD. Though we have content moderation peer mechanisms in place, they're more often than not controlled by central authorities and may not necessarily always be neutral. The question that we answer today is, can we use the power of blockchain to create a decentralized moderation system? Presenting a two-layer decentralized content moderation where the AI-based filtering acts as the first line of defense and the users on the platform acts as a second line of defense before a content is approved and put on the global feed of the platform. Now let us dive a little deeper into exactly how these layers work. Whenever a content is uploaded on the platform, it undergoes uh, analysis, uh, the text undergoes the sentiment analysis, while the video undergoes analysis of frame by frame to look for any kind of explicit content. Once the content is approved, it is put on the global feed of the platform. Now, even after that, should a user feel that the content is objectionable, they can flag the content and it is removed from the global feed and moved for moderation. In the moderation queue, the users vote on the approval or rejection of the content while staking their tokens to substantiate their vote. At the end of the voting, a decision is made and the voters on the winning side are rewarded for being on the right side of the vote. Now let us look at uh, how the voting process and the distribution of reward works in a little more detail via an example. Suppose this is the content piece under moderation. Now we have three voters who voted in favor of approval and have staked a total of 15 tokens. On the other side, we have two voters who voted in favor of rejection and have staked a total of 30 tokens. Now, despite more tokens being staked on the rejection side, the approval still wins the vote because of the number of voters voting in favor. On the platform, every vote counts for a single vote only, and this is to prevent um, whales from swaying the vote and maintaining the integrity of the platform. Post this, the tokens that have been staked by the rejection side or the losing side are then redistributed among the voters on the winning side. This distribution happens in the exact same proportion as the number original number of tokens staked by the voters on the winning side. Now, a major advantage of a platform like this is that it can be used to moderate content of all types, be it text, audio, images, or video. We have developed a moderation MVP for the Supernova Hackathon, which can be accessed at moderation.gobazinga.io. As the next steps, we would convert this uh, module into an open source repository for other projects on the IC ecosystem to use, wherein they can pick up this open source repository, tweak it according to their own needs, and use it in a ready-made manner. Further, this would be ready for integration with the main Gobazinga app, which was always the intention for the module. Now, before we wrap up, we'll just take you through a little bit about what Gobazinga is. 
Now, for to understand Go Bazinga, imagine TikTok on internet computer with a layer of speculation or fantasy league-like speculation on top of it. On the platform, the users are rewarded for creating content, engaging with content, or for speculating on content created by other users. The objective is to enable monetization for all 3 billion social media users, irrespective of whether they're creators or passive learners. Our decentralized app is already live, and we have more than 6,000 users on board coming from all across the world. This is accompanied by a growing and engaged community on Twitter, Discord, and other social media handles as well. Now, we're a team of three serial entrepreneurs who are working on GoBazinga and bring together a combined experience of more than 25 years in various fields of business, ranging from marketing technology to finance. We are also backed by investors from across the globe, such as Anni Capital, Tooling Built, and a group of Harvard alumni from the US. Further, we've been a part of the Definity Developer Grant Program as well. Well, thank you so much, and we welcome any questions that you may have on the content moderation module or the GoBazinga project at large. Thank you, GoBazinga team. Next up, we have a contribute from Team Bonsai. So hi, my name is Jesse, and uh, I am happy to present Contribute today. So I'm a developer on Team Bonsai, and we built the so this Socialfy app, and we call it Web 3.0 Storytelling with NFTs. So writers need a secure and trustless platform to host their stories and raise funds. So currently, there's loads of apps out there that are you know, letting writers like write fiction, nonfiction stories and uh, engage with large audiences. But these, these are Web2 platforms that are engaging in like shady practices of like taking data, doing, you know, taking large fees out of the profits that uh, these writers are making and sharing to their, to their audiences. And some of them aren't even, don't even have a monetization model. The writers are, are making money from Patreon and stuff for writing their fiction and nonfiction stories. So we wanted to bring this to Web3 and we've made an inbuilt monetization model for writers and artists via NFTs. So just uh, before I show our app, I just want to say some stats so far. Um, app is only as good as, as how you're doing with it and how much users you have, I think. So we already have around 300 active monthly users. Uh, we've sold over 700 NFTs on our marketplace and Launchpad and we've airdropped out hundreds more. And that's grown every day. We're not stopping there. Uh, we already have grown a nice social community. We've got, I think it's actually almost 4K Twitter followers. A nice little peak there recently, a uh, thousand Discord members. And we have three larger projects lined up that want to launch <clears throat> stories and NFTs on our platform. Pendragon Quest is next up and um, Galactic Guardians is, is another IC project. Animal Kingdom is another NFT project that want to uh, launch on our platform. So I'll just jump into the live demo. Great. So this is our app on the IC, fully decentralized, uh, front end to back end. Back end is in Matoko. Our authentication is in uh, Internet Identity. Uh, our app is split into three main uh, sections. So we've got our story section, our launch pad, and our marketplace. So this is the story section I'm in right now. This is where readers will be just browsing through stories written by individual authors as well as larger projects. That's the featured section there. We've got Bonsai Warriors launched by us, Team Bonsai. It's just a multi-chapter story about the characters of our NFTs, the world around them, and all that good stuff. Pendragon Quests, up and coming. They are in the most like section there, so people can like on stories if they want. Um, try to get in that most like section, get to the top of the app. Um, if you've got NFTs linked, you'll be able to then view that author's NFTs and buy them on our marketplace, which I'll be showing in a moment. Um, this is where you'll just create a story. We have a nice tutorial on how you link in your own NFTs. So I'll just take you to our launch pad now. So this is where we launched the larger projects NFTs. So if you've got, you know, thousands of NFTs to sell, it's not suitable to just launch a couple. Um, it's not suitable like uh, to mint them all individually, right? So uh, we launched them on our launch pad. Uh, we've launched Bonsai Warriors, which was their collection of NFTs from our Bonsai Warriors stories. It's sold out. It was a great launch. Now next up and coming is uh, Pendragon Quest. They launched in about 10 days. So we're looking forward to that. And now next, I'd like to show our marketplace. So our marketplace is where you'll actually be trading NFTs. It's all inbuilt in into the DAP, right? So you'll just you'll be able to just 
come into this app and to browse through NFT collections and, and all of the different stories and all that good stuff. It's it's a functional marketplace. It's got all the got some filtering tools here of of different things. We've got a rarity model for NFTs. They go from common to legendary, epic, and all that. Um, so if you're off, obviously if you're authenticated, you'll be able to view it in a larger view. Your NFT, uh, the NFTs, and buy one if you want as well. Um, and then if you're obviously authenticated as well, you've got a profile in the DAP. So we actually have an ICP wallet with an NFT inventory in DAP as well, and a profile to view your own stories, your like stories, and all that good stuff. So I'll just show off our, our NFT inventory. So this is where you know you'll be enjoying NFTs that you've bought from stories, and also has some nice filtering tools in here. And um, you can do whatever you want with your NFTs as you'd expect. View it, transfer it out to any other address that supports our ICP standard, which is NFTA. We're powered by the Anvil protocol. is a nice is another ICP DAP that we, uh, that we work with closely. Um, you can transfer, or yet yeah, you can sell it on a marketplace. Just set a price for it; it'll appear on a marketplace, and you can burn it if you want to do that, or just enjoy it in a larger view. So yeah, just quickly, I'd like to just show uh, an individual story that's not launched on the launch pad and an NFT attached to it. This one's called, and uh, if I scroll down, I can see this author's NFTs. He's selling an NFT called the OG, it's for one ICP. So I'm just gonna buy it there. And it's we call them the IC, it's all centralized, powered by Matoko. Great. And now I own that NFT, it'll appear in my inventory. So that's our demo. So really thanks for listening. And uh, I'm happy to answer any questions about our app. All right. Thank you, Jesse from Thank Contribute. You. Let's move on to our next contestant with STKRS. Hi, everyone. We're Stickers, and we're the social identity app for Web3. We're all here because we're believers of crypto. But even as believers, we have to admit that there are problems with our beloved space. Vitalik Buterin recently outlined three big problems in Web3. First is airdrops. Airdrops are inefficient in being gained. Individuals are doing just enough to get airdrops and immediately dumping tokens, sinking prices. Second, verification remains a big problem in both Web2 and Web3. Scams, botting, lying, and general lack of trust is pervasive throughout all online interactions, leading to a shocking cost of nearly $1 billion in online fraud. Third, governance. DAOs remain imperfect, with whales accumulating most of the power by being able to purchase more tokens, leaving us with a bad imitation of our current political system. Okay, lots of problems. What is Stickers? Stickers is the social identity application for Web3. On the website, each user gets their own wall, which is most analogous to a Facebook page. Each wall contains a user's stickers, which are non-transferable, soul-bound NFTs representing a user's life experiences professionally and socially. For example, holding a job at a company for a certain number of years or attending an ICP developer conference are all examples of possible stickers. These stickers are granted to users by verified organizations such as their employer or event organizers, such as Definity in this example. Users can also comment on each other's walls to write referrals for one another, provided they share the same stickers. How does this solve any problems? Well, first on airdrops, airdrops should focus on rewarding developers. Why? Developers are directly responsible for a protocol's adoption. They build the dApps that get users on a protocol, increasing transaction volume and price of tokens. We target developers through POKES or proof of attendance protocols, where we can track loyal developers who attend your conference. Say ICP hosted a developer conference and has a desk allowing developers attending the conference to enter their wallet. ICP then airdrops to these loyal developers who are clearly genuinely interested in your protocol. This allows ICP to keep track of their developers, potentially holding them in the future when they're deciding which features to prioritize on the roadmap. The second problem is a big one, verification. How does stickers verify at all? Well, traditionally, social media requires users to give out a crazy amount of data in order to prove you're a real person. However, in today's day and age, it's easy to impersonate someone with their public photos, creating a system where bots are verified and comment on other bots posts, while real individuals who want to retain some privacy are labeled as bots. Stickers system makes it difficult to create bots with stickers at scale. 
Stickers are given out at in-person events where there's one sticker for each person or in virtual communities where CAPTCHAs and other advanced techniques prevent botting. Since stickers cannot be sold or transferred, botting is also unprofitable. This means that professionally, there's no more lying. Stickers belong to you. And since we would verify organizations giving out stickers, we know that when you say you got a job or you got a certain degree, you actually did those things. Users must share stickers to comment on each other's walls, meaning commenters must actually know the people they're referring, creating higher quality feedback. Socially, connections are formed through deeper commonalities. Instead of, oh, we're both from California, it's, oh, we both attended the ICP conference. Do you want to build together? Relationships are more meaningful. Finally, a bit of a hot topic given to lend is governance. How can we actually build an equitable organization? DAOs can create a simple algorithm to give a single governance sticker to each profile. As an example of this algorithm, an environmental DAO can give a DAO voting sticker only to profiles that have an environmental pope. Voting communities will now be more passionate and more qualified. Governance is no longer about how much of a token you own and rights can't be sold or transferred. It's cyber resistant as well, since botted accounts are hard to create and are easily found out as mentioned before. In order to make sure stickers are issued from real organizations, we plan to create a stickers DAO that verifies and allows organizations to be network. Revenue from sale of sticker issuance to organizations are shared between the DAO and the company, and will additionally make money from advertising events that give out stickers on the Discover tab. In just a few weeks, our team has built out our own protocol to mint and grant non-transferable stickers to our users. We've also built out a thematic front end for users to sign in with internet identity and interface with our protocol, with pages to search for users on the platform, to view user sticker walls, and to comment on each other's profiles. Organizations can also view all users who share their sticker. We're excited to bring our project to the world. We'll start with rigorous testing and then officially launch after a partnership with a big crypto conference, handing out popes at the conference and booth. We'll continue this to solve the chicken and egg problem focusing on leveraging existing communities, promoting stickers by offering them at conferences. In the future, if we can build out a system of trust, the sky is the limit. Our service can operate as the Web3 auth portal, a place to receive tickets and build fervent communities. And finally, finally, a method to build out uncollateralized lending services in DeFi. We chose ICP because it fits our project perfectly. Users shouldn't have to pay gas fees to receive a sticker. Given our aspirations as an off and DeFi portal, we need fast and reliable service. ICP allows for everything to be on on-chain and decentralized while working at web speed, something not possible in web two and web three alternatives. This is our team. We bring a lot of experience in development, business, and in the crypto ecosystem. You can view our team sticker walls or make one of your own at stickers.me. Thanks for listening. Now let's open up for questions. All right, thank you stickers team. Let's move on to our final presentation from Team Signals. Hi everyone, my name is Bernie and I am so excited to share with you all my app Signals. So I was inspired to build Signals after moving to a new city and I found it really hard to connect with people around me. It occurred to me that I pass the same strangers every day who maybe share my interests and hobbies we live in the same building, go to the same gym, or maybe we want to play the same sports. And despite an epidemic of loneliness, crowded cities and all of us carrying devices, which constantly broadcast our location to private companies, it seems like it is harder than ever to connect with one another in genuine and meaningful ways. And I know from organizing arts and social spaces myself that when we are able to find one another, it's often difficult to organize democratically or financially. Signals allows users to broadcast different types of signals onto a map. People can then inter um, interact with these, up or down vote them, or leave messages. Signals is a unique social fi space for making connections, discovering local events, and creating decentralized communities. Signals is a DAO, and so the more you interact with it, the greater say you have in its governance. I think it presents an opportunity to rethink social media, to put social connection back at the heart, to center it around local communities coming together over their shared needs. I really wanted to solve something that was a real problem for average users and to build something unique that would bring people to the platform 
to benefit from decentralization, but without needing to have technical knowledge beforehand. But I think the best way to show its potential is to demo it. So hopefully you can see this as well. Uh, this is the live site, and these are lots of signals that people have been leaving all over the world. Uh, if I zoom into London, we can take a look, a look at the different types of signals. Um, so this is the chat signal. It can be used for a range of things, maybe finding a language exchange partner, a running buddy, maybe you want to connect with other new parents in your area, or maybe you just want to organize with your neighbors in your apartment block, which was something we saw that there was a real need for during COVID. The great thing about it is that the possibilities are really only constrained by the imagination of its users. You also have the trade signal, so you can list goods and services for sale. Um, and this works similarly to how apps like Gumtree or Wallapop might work. And you have the event signal. So at the moment, you can already buy tickets in the app. And I think this could be a great way to onboard new users and bring them to the platform. I know from organizing events myself that existing platforms take a high commission without adding much value, and they don't make the event particularly discoverable to local people in that area. And yet people will download a new app just to buy tickets to a specific event that they want to attend. You also have these views to search through the different chats, trades, and events. So Signals is built as a DAO, and as you've seen, a user doesn't necessarily have to understand what that is in order to benefit from what Signals has to offer. But here you can see your profile information, how many tokens you have, and the current configuration of the DAO. Um, so this shows you things like the amount of tokens you receive for creating a signal, um, how many downvotes you need before a signal is deleted, and how many um, other things as well, like how many tokens you get for having a highly rated signal. So the idea here is that the community together can find the right balance between incentivizing users to populate data and maintaining the health of that data. I obviously really like the idea in general, and I think it offers something unique just through the map. Um, but this was one of the most fun things to implement for me, because this is where we see how it could truly be a web free platform run by its users. And I would love to take these down mechanics much further as well. So what's next for signals? So the pin icons are customizable, and I think this could be a great way to reward early users or investors. Another great way to bring people onto the platform is through curated lists of pins. You could, for example, follow your favorite food blogger to find the best spots to eat in your city. I'd also really love to build a DAO launcher into the platform so that when people do connect with one another, they're able to organize amongst themselves to solve their own problems. I want to make the potential of DAOs available to ordinary people to use in their own communities so that we can all benefit from decentralization and the power of blockchain. Private DAOs could also pay to have their own private maps, and you could even unlock hidden maps if you acquire enough signals token. So you could have the DAO governance chat happen on Mars, for example. I think signals has huge potential because it's simple. The concept and user experience are clean and effective, and yet there are so many ways that it can be used. And I think it's easy for people to customize it to suit their particular needs. Already I've seen people using it in ways that I hadn't anticipated. Um, people have left job postings, giveaways, and all sorts of things. So I launched the app a week ago for Supernova and I've really been blown away by the reception so far. Um, people have left signals all over the world in Hong Kong, Japan, China, India. I'll run out of time if I try to name them all. Um, but I think that it shows the excitement that people feel about stripping social media back to what it could be, which is not endless scrolling and arguments, but real human connection. Thank you so much for listening. Um, please go and leave a signal. It's been so great to see a visual representation of where everybody in the community is based. And I would love to answer any questions that you have. All right, thank you, Bernie. Thank you so much. And thank you to all of our amazing contestants um, for your incredible work. We're now going to take 20 minutes to deliberate on the winner for the social pie track. So let's have all of our judges please enter the backstage 
of this session. The backstage icon is in the bottom right of your Zoom screen, and it looks like a door. Finalists and our audiences can now go to the main session or go to the lobby to enjoy the break time sessions. The grand champion demo will start at 9.50 Pacific time in the main session.